Welcome to the ICC Nairobi podcast, where we are all about raising godly generations. We're so glad you're here, and we believe that wherever you're listening to us from, this word will bless and minister to you. You know, I, I must say that one of the greatest experiences I've had in life is being a mother. And I really, I've, I, even up to this day, I always think that motherhood is a miracle. The very fact that God can allow a child to be knitted in your womb and, and gives you the grace to be able to have that child just come into the world, nurture them, is a miracle. And we are going to talk a little bit about how to raise godly families and I'm going to be sharing a lot from my own experience. Amen? Um, I am a wife, as you've heard. Um, my husband and I are celebrating 39 years in September. We're still growing strong, you know? And we have, of course, two adult daughters and, and a granddaughter. And I'll take some time to share from my experience some gems that have greatly influenced all our lives, and especially our daughters, who are very successful in their careers and very committed to the things of God and are involved in ministry in as far as their calling is concerned. And I want to look at about three areas today from our theme, and uh, the text that we are going to be sharing from can be put up um, on one of the slides that I shared. And it comes from Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. And this is what it says in the KJV. It says, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Of course, here, God is speaking about Abraham. Another version says, for I have chosen him. And yet another says, for I have singled him out. So that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. And listen to this, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. God could confidently say that he knew that Abraham would lead his children in the ways of the Lord. That always moves me. I want you to think about that for a moment if you're a parent. Do you think God is saying that about you today, that he, he is confident that you are raising or will raise your children in his ways? And then he goes on to say that he will do what is right, living out his faith walk, and God can now confidently say that the promises that he has for Abraham will come to pass in his life. Your theme for the month, I've been told, is firm foundations. And foundations are very important. An Indian real estate uh, company called SA Homes posted on its website the helpful information about the importance of foundations. They said the strength of a building lies in its foundation. The main purpose of the foundation is to hold the structure above it and keep it upright. Do we have any architects in the building? On the contrary, a poorly constructed foundation can be dangerous to the occupants and to the neighborhood, and we all know that in Nairobi. They went on to say, a good and strong foundation keeps the building standing while the forces of nature wreak havoc. Well-built foundations keep the occupants of the building safe during calamities such as earthquakes, floods, strong winds, etc. Now, this is exactly what Jesus said. 
when he likened a person who hears and acts upon his word, in Luke chapter 6, verse 48, he said, he is like a man building a house who dug and went down deep and laid a foundation upon the rock. And when the floods rose, the torrent broke up against the house and could not shake or move it because it had been securely built or founded on the rock. Amen? Now, uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3.10 added to that saying, like a skillful architect and master builder, I laid the foundation. And now he said, another man is building upon it, but let each man be careful how he builds upon it. So we're going to look at three building blocks. Number one, we're going to look at the vision for your family. Number two, the faith walk. And number three, the promises of God. And, you know, if the slides are available, I, I would be grateful if you put them up. I actually can't see. Oh, okay. I guess they're behind me. All right, fantastic. The vision for your family. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, which means no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. Another version says, where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained or they cast off restraint. You know, it's like that cuckoo running a, a, around without the head. Unrestrained, no vision, no vision. You see, I believe it's very important to have a vision for your home, for your family. Have, have a clear picture in your mind. These visions are built on faith. Abraham had faith and he believed God, even though in the physical realm, it seemed impossible because his circumstances actually gave him a different picture. Every parent I believe, and this is what I did, as a very, very young mother, and, and made this determination even before I got married. Every parent should be able to visualize their children coming to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and them walking with God, being guided by faith, and even as they grow up, the choice of their future career, guided by God. Choice of a life partner, guided by God. And the vision of seeing them use their gifts and calling for the kingdom of God, even if they're working for corporate. It doesn't mean that every child will stand behind a pulpit. So let's start there. Visualize it and then pray for it to come to fruition. And if you can visualize it, you are more likely to act upon it. So the faith walk is number two. And we're coming from our text again, you know, God says, for I've chosen him so that he will direct. I know he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord, of course, will bring about the promises that he made to Abraham. I said it earlier, God confidently could say that he knew Abraham would lead his children. We must determine to live out our faith walk in God. And I, I would say the first area to focus uh, in your faith walk, as far as raising a godly family is concerned, is to train up a child in the way they should go. And I know you've heard this 
a gazillion number of times. You can quote it yourself. And the Bible promises when he is old, he will not depart from it. It doesn't say that he won't fail. It doesn't say that he won't make mistakes and stumble. It does say, though, that when he is older, he will not depart from that way. You see, training a child is not just a good idea. It is a God idea. In another version, Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gift and bent. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Amplified Classic Version. And now one of my favorite scriptures in the area of showing God's desire for godly offspring is Malachi chapter 2, verse 15. And I'll just read a portion of it, and it's, and it's a question. And why did God make you two one, husband and wife? And the answer comes speedily. He says, because he sought a godly offspring from your union. That's why he brought you together. And so now we are going to look at I'm going to basically tell you my life's testimony about the key areas that we focused on very intentionally when our kids were young. We were not like, oops, they've come. What are we going to do? We knew. We, we had already talked about it. And it's really based on the word, prayer, and our personal testimony. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I've, I'm, I'm getting over a cough. So where did we start? We started with Bible stories, as Victoria told you from, from the day she was born, she was like, what's going on here, you know? We started with Bible stories from the time they were very young. Bedtime was always a time to tell stories and teach a principle that we read in the story and then pray with them every night. I used what was known as the best seller's Christian Bible, and it's still being sold here at, at, at the Christian bookstores. Um, it's the children's Bible um, in 365 stories. And, and there's an image of it right there. I loved that Bible. I loved it. And all our children's Bible stories were so beautifully illustrated. It made our work easy because the illustrations were so well done and our children loved the pictures. And I'm sure Vicky's smiling there because she remembers the book. We always made it a point to share a principle that related to the story, usually a testimony of our own. And this made the story come alive and relatable to them in their young lives. Remember, what you are doing is investing. And then the Holy Spirit is taking that principle and working it in their lives. I don't care whether your testimony is so small, like I trusted God for bus fare. I used to tell my daughters that. I trusted God for bus fare, and you know, when I was young, we lived all the, you know, Embakasi seemed very far back in the day because there was nothing else there. My dad worked at the airport, and you know, it was like you were going to the Bundus usually. Most of my friends, they would be on the bus for like five, 10 minutes. I was on the bus for over 30 something minutes, and they used to take long to come. So I was always twiddling my thumb, thumbs, waiting at the bus stop for my, my, my bus, which would take hours to come. And my father didn't understand my salvation. I get, got saved at 14 years old. And so they, they didn't feel they needed to give me a bus fare. And I would go to fellowship, and you know, I actually didn't know how I was going to get back home. And somebody would just come with, 20, you know, 20 shillings back in the day, those who said they knew uh, Ufungamanu, whoa, 20 bucks. That's like, it's a life changer there. 
And somebody would come and, and greet me and, and, and say, you know, God bless you. And these are young people like me. And those, that's how my testimony started to grow. God was providing what I needed. My husband led both our daughters to the Lord at a very early age, and he was very instrumental in identifying Bible study materials to help them connect with God daily. Um, we used a series by a group called Crusade for World Revival. It was a very powerful and helpful Bible study series to them. It consisted of a story in cartoon form and then a Bible study on the same. And it was such a creative and exciting way to teach biblical truths in a format that children could understand. You see, I never viewed Sunday school or Sunday school lessons in church to be the primary source for biblical knowledge for our children. I actually believed we, the parents, were the primary teachers for the Word of God. Sunday school reinforced what we were teaching. Any Sunday school teacher in here will tell you that usually in the class there are some hands which fly up. They know everything. They could teach the class. Usually those kids are hearing those stories at home. You see, later on they both got spirit-filled at a very young age at a DVBS at our church, Valley Road, early in the day. They were distinctly praying in tongues. I am forever grateful to our Sunday school superintendent at the time who was our pastor's wife for following the leading of the Holy Spirit on that day because hundreds of children got baptized in the Holy Spirit. As they grew older, they continued with Bible study series and we continued with our prayer and study time every evening without fail. And it wasn't long after that I began to see our children pick up their Bibles at their own volition and read them. And, and I, honestly, that surprised me because I was like, can they even understand, you know, like the version, you know? Jesus taught again in Matthew 7 that the house built on the rock withstood all attacks upon it, whether it was the wind, the waves, the rain, etc. So in laying the foundation, Parents, I want to encourage you. You must believe that the Holy Spirit is communicating with your children and that the connection is being made. So let me ask you the question, have you laid a foundation? Then have confidence that God says in his word and what he says in his word will surely come to pass in the lives of your children. You know, our daughter Mabel, when she was four years old, said to my husband, I am so happy with my life. I thank God for putting me in a family that teaches me to love God more. Vicky was so instrumental in uh, coming home and, and quoting scriptures because she was going at, to our church school at that time. And I remember one time I was perturbed about something and um, especially because it was taking so long and, and I was talking and Vicky said to me, Mom, the Bible says it is good to wait on the Lord. And I was like, I challenged her. Like, how do you know? <laughs> you know? And she gave me the scripture and I was like, okay, yeah. You know, God uses children. My granddaughter, when she was only three years old, I, I just want to tell you how God moves. I, I was ministering to a lady on the phone, we were back in the States and she was going through a myriad of problems and she called me for counseling and I, I counseled her and then I started to pray and I, I just went very strongly into tongues, and just really waiting on God to show me what to really say to her. And my granddaughter at three years old started to jump up and down. I thought she had an electric shock, honestly, because of the look on her face. She said, Mama, faith! Mama, faith! Mama, faith, faith! And she was jumping up and down. Okay, that's the interpretation of the tongues. 
And I started to minister to this lady in the area of faith, and God really gave her a breakthrough. Now, some of you, your children do these things. They run up to you, don't they? Anoint you with oil, some of you. That's what she did to me one day, burst, up, burst into the room. I, I was really not feeling well that day. And I was laying on the bed, couldn't really tell what was wrong. And my granddaughter just burst into the room. And she had been playing somewhere else and ran up to the bed where we used to put the olive oil and she smeared it on her hand and slapped my forehead and said, Lord Jesus, heal mama. <laughs> and I can tell you, I kid you not, I was immediately released from that infirmity. Our children do that, encourage them. These are the, the treasure hold of, uh, of, of, of testimonies that you must keep within your family. So let's look at a couple of areas. I'm going to go very quickly into areas of focus that I personally believe are very important. Now, of course, we, I, we've already talked about you know, the testimony time, prayer, and the word. I believe it's very important to focus on building relationships in your family. In other words, spend quality time. Recently, and this is someone personally known to us, a distraught father shared how his preteen son was acting up, drowning himself in internet games and simply being difficult at home. It turns out that he was reacting to his father's absence from the home because of long working hours. With a little counsel and a change of his workload, there was such a sense of relief and stability in his son. It was very impactful. Have activity time, have your, your game night. Buy a pack of cards and just play, because usually your, your childlike nature comes out, then your, your children see another side of you, bond together, have special activities that are unique to your family. Mothers and daughters can have their time, fathers and sons. I don't need to tell you more because I know many of you could be doing these things. Focus on their needs. Be attuned to their needs. Assure them that you support them no matter what. And then be alert to the voice of God when you're, you're considering how to reach out to the ch your children when, when they're going through something and you don't quite understand. Be alert to the voice of God and the promptings of the Holy Spirit for guidance in dealing with or handling their issues. And one of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 30, 21. It says, whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. James chapter one says, if you lack wisdom, ask God. And I encourage you to do that. Take a little time on the side and, you know, because many times we just pelt our children with, with instructions and, and things like that. And why are you not talking? Say something and et cetera, et cetera. And many times just being quiet and hearing from the Lord, you will get very clear instructions and you will actually sense a breakthrough in those areas. Focus, this is very important also, on their gifts and developing their talents. Second Peter says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. So we come to our third point, the promise and our final point, the promises of God. And I'll read you our text again. God says, I've chosen Abraham because he will delight his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. And then, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. God is a promise-keeping God. God is a promise-keeping God. You see, that... that Promise is in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gift or bend. And when he is old, he will not depart. That is a promise 
that you and I can hold on to. I believe it's critically important to lean fully on God's words and promises. I have done that. Today is the day to stir up your faith, to hold on to God's promises, and to reassure yourself again, no matter what it may look like. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? And will he not do it? Has he spoken? And will he not make it good? That's Numbers 23, 19. Even though pressures exist in your home, I believe God will shield you and protect your family. Your faith needs to arise. We cannot live our lives carrying a burden that we were not created to carry. Because I hear this from many parents. What burden? Fearing for the future of their children. Faith and fear, they can't live in the same house. If you have entrusted your children to God, he who knows all things will put a hedge of protection around them and grant them the grace to grow in him. So at whatever point your children may be today, and maybe even your spouse, backslidden, indifferent, or even rebellious, I encourage you to have a vision, to continue in your faith walk, and be assured that God's promises will come to pass. I must say that I, I can give the testimony that my girls have a vibrant walk with the Lord. They are involved in ministries that they feel called to. Uh, Vicky, because of her job, ministers to a lot of young women. And she goes out to schools and speaks. And, and God has truly anointed her in this area. They are involved in spiritual disciplines of regular study of the word fasting and prayer. They are always in fasting and prayer and seeking God's wisdom, even in their careers. Now, listen, they go through various ups and downs like everybody else, struggles. But they believe that God will see them through. And so I want to encourage you. Um, I, as, as we go along throughout the day, I will probably just give different testimonies as I go along. But I want to encourage you, parents, don't give up. And, and I always say, and, and this really touches my heart to say this. I know parents who are, have been so frustrated by their children, they give up. If you give up, who will hold on? Who has the, 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 the real purpose to hold on? You are the one who've been given covering over them. And I want you to, to stir up your faith today and believe God. Because when you do that, and you begin to pray in that direction, I know sometimes when people hear prayer, they get angry. You know why? Because they say, you think I haven't been praying? You know, I understand that. I fully understand that. But you won't get frustrated in prayer if your faith is stirred up. And then you will find the Holy Spirit will begin to target that child wherever they are and usually send someone to them. Someone who will effectively talk to them, do a better job than you, by the way, because maybe you're very angry at that time. So God bless you. I encourage you to have a vision for your home. And if you haven't, craft it out, pray together about it. Continue to walk in the Lord and lean securely on the promises of God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like more information about ICC Nairobi, you can follow us on all our social media platforms, that is Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at ICC underscore Nairobi or our website, iccnairobi.org. Be sure to subscribe and share this podcast with your family and friends. Until next time.